Hi, uh, my name is Cheryl Huntbatch and um, I've been teaching with the uh, Open College Arts for approximately one and a half years. I teach across the drawing programmes and also painting and I'm um, the unit leader for the Foundation Drawing Programme. Yeah, um, it, kind of, it tends to differ depending on um, the body of work I'm making and, and also sometimes I work collaboratively as well. But drawing is really fundamental to my practice. Um, I tend to, ta tend to start off by uh, setting myself uh, quite a rigid um, drawing programme. So for instance, I might set myself um, uh, a drawing every day for uh, so many months and that tends to be, I will focus on a particular um, aspect of drawing. So for instance, this body of work that, um, that I have an exhibition of here, um, I made this in response to initially uh, a drawing project that I set myself uh, 18 months ago, which is called 7x7x7. Seven by seven by seven. And, um, and at the time I was kind of, I wanted to develop my, my own practice away from something I'd been doing previously. So I set myself a very simple project where every morning uh, for seven days a week, for seven weeks, I would get up and I would make a, a drawing for seven minutes. So it was kind of very pragmatic. Um, and so I would set my alarm and I would draw a particular series of branches of a sycamore tree that was in my garden. Um, and it's, it's actually, it's quite an interesting project in that the, my expectations of it were very kind of uh, restricted. Um, but because of that, it allowed me to um, bring in kind of elements of play. Um, I was able to kind of push against those kind of seemingly very prescribed boundaries. Um, and at the end of the seven weeks, I had quite a substantial body of work to then revisit, uh, reflect on, and then think about how I might develop that further. Think about something that you really enjoy doing. Um, set yourself uh, a little project that is very doable, something that is kind of, that you can do on a regular basis, so for instance, if you have a family or, or you work, think about a time of the day that you, you think that you could allocate a small period of time to. Um, do something that you enjoy doing or work with materials that you have a kind of real facility with. Um, so for instance, the drawing project that I was talking about, uh, seven minutes a day is something that's very doable. So for instance, set yourself a particular period of time um, at a time of the day when you're not going to be disturbed, uh, set yourself an alarm and you know, just do the project every single day for a very small period of time um, and then think about how you could then develop that. So for instance, if you do a series of drawings, how could you take that into um, photography or could you make a sculpture from them? Whatever your particular interests are or leanings, um, I would use those and just go with, go with a good, kind of gut response of the materials and the processes that you would like to work from. I think this is something that it just it takes quite a long time to um, to develop. Um, an understanding of your own practice and to, um, to be able to kind of evaluate your own work. I think one of the things is to, to actually maybe try and develop um, what I would call a community of practice. So get together with other people who make work, not necessarily the same kind of work as you, but somebody who you feel kind of comfortable, to, you know, to talk to, who you could use as a sounding board, um, and just have kind of um, kind of easy conversations with them initially. I think it's really important to talk about your work in terms of 
the qualities that it has, rather than sometimes people talk about what is good about your work or what is bad about the work. I think kind of um, placing those judgments on your work or anybody else's doesn't really help you to unearth um, and kind of sift through the kinds of qualities that the work might have. I think one thing is actually spending time with your own work. So for instance, if you've made a drawing or a painting or you've had a kind of particular session where you're working in your studio or at your, your desk, is to just take some time to actually just sit back and look at the work and maybe initially not actually ask any questions, possibly have a notepad with you, um, almost kind of look at the work and just allow things to kind of pop up into your consciousness and make some bullet, bullet points, um, evaluating how it looks and then kind of making connections with um, ideas that you're interested in and also for me, particularly when I was on my undergraduate course and I was kind of um, starting to kind of find out what really interested me in terms of my visual language, the materials I was using, um, the artists I was interested in, I think it's important to kind of draw on the research that you're doing. So for instance, um, if you read anything in an article or you hear something that somebody says and it kind of strikes a chord with you, to make a note of that and then to kind of revisit that and try and kind of um, unearth and, and expand on what are the connections between my own work and somebody else's or the ideas that somebody talks about in their work, why does that kind of resonate with me? Um, so sometimes I used to take particular kind of key phrases or words and then think about what's the connection between those particular phrases um, or why am I drawn to those ideas? How does that kind of inform and resonate with my own practice? Sometimes writing helps me to evaluate my own practice. Um, it's a process of, uh, it's almost kind of like a mirror, I suppose. And sometimes um, actually writing down my own thoughts and ideas could help me to kind of develop um, develop connections and recognise those connections. In addition to that, having conversations with people. So for instance, um, in this my current exhibition, I had a preview a couple of weeks ago, and that was really interesting. You know, some people who know my work for quite quite a few years, um, and having conversations with them about how my ideas now reflect back to work that I was doing kind of 10, 15 years ago. When you're thinking about your own work, sometimes it's useful to um, approach your work, sort of, I, I kind of describe it like a spiral. You're not trying to understand and glean the meaning of it in a kind of direct way, but you're sort of feeling your way around it. Um, so for instance, you might start off by looking at the work and thinking about the quality of line, uh, the visual language that you're using, um, how might you describe that to somebody who um, doesn't understand uh, visual language. So you sort of, I use the term unearthing and um, kind of sifting through, um, almost like you're kind of approaching the work from the edges and, and getting a real kind of feel for, uh, for the visual language and the ideas and the motifs. Um, and then you kind of start to get towards, make connections with the meaning. I think this is um, kind of, it's quite a slippery question, personal voice. It's something that kind of develops over time. But, um, and it tends to be, I think it's quite kind of multi-layered really. I know for me in my own practice, um, my personal voice can kind of, I can see it resonating from way back, you know, kind of influences from my childhood. 
um, from my kind of personal background. And I, but I think kind of fundamentally, personal voice is about um, things, ideas, elements that feel um, very kind of genuine and authentic to me and to oneself. Um, and I would really encourage students to, to try and draw on their own kind of personal experiences, um, interests, passions, things that really um, excite and drive you. Um, because I know from experience of making work, but also being a tutor for many years, sometimes students feel that there's a particular expectation or way that they need to make work. Um, particularly when they're kind of following, obviously, um, the course um, units and, um, and the exercises. But I would really kind of encourage students to, within those exercises and the assignments, to really just allow themselves to um, explore ideas that kind of pop up. And, um, and there's nothing kind of more exciting than coming across a, a student work where you can see that they've just, they've gone off on their own kind of trajectory and journey. And they're actually, they're actually exploring something that you can see it really excites them. And, um, and it kind of triggers something that um, maybe they've been interested in for quite a long time, but they haven't actually recognised it. Um, so, for instance, um, my own personal voice, some of those things, my background is a fine art practice. I was trained as, um, as a painter. Um, I've, always, I've always drawn, but since being quite young, I've been interested in kind of design um, and that's always kind of fed my art practice. Um, it might not have fed it kind of directly, but I've always been interested in how things are made. So in a sense, I suppose the craft of um, making is really important to me. Um, also using kind of tools and playing around with um, different kinds of technologies like um, you know the kind of the touch of materials and the, the, the touch and the feel of tools um, what you might call the kind of haptic is something that has always been um, it's kind of feels like it's been the fabric of my existence for since being a child I come from quite a working class background but but in terms of my my uh, background, my parents had some um, particular kind of pieces of furniture and I remember being really interested in how they fitted together and how they moved and I think that kind of interest and um, an inquiry into how things are made, how things respond to the touch and how you use them, all those things have kind of stayed with me. So how that kind of feeds into my own work is I really enjoy the kind of qualities of um, exploring materials and how they feel in the hand and how they feel when you, you're using them. Um, so in terms of my personal voice, uh, materials, um, processes, spending time in nature and observing and reflecting on um, how that kind of informs me. All those kinds of things, I suppose, are part of my own personal experience and my personal voice. But in terms of being a student, I would encourage students to really try and trust their own judgment. Um, because I think when we, when we make work as artists and as, as students, we, you know, we kind of operate on lots of different levels. So there's a kind of a conscious level, an intellectual level, but there's also a level that's kind of, a, a, you know, a gut level based on experience. So I would really encourage you to go with that and trust it and 
take time to kind of develop that and reflect on that because that's part of who you are. It's a really fundamental part of who you are as a person and also as a, an artist or a designer. Yes, I think, um, I think anybody who um, is, a, is a, an artist or a student and has a life, you know, whether it's a family life or kind of working, um, other responsibilities, um, I think it's kind of, it's normal to have blocks or to kind of feel like you haven't got the energy at times. Um, and kind of within those periods, I've tried to set myself... Um, quite a kind of simple project that I feel is really achievable. Um, I, I tend not to kind of, I don't set myself any kind of big ambitions, just to sort of develop a small body of work that you can then um, develop further later on. So for instance, the drawing, uh, the drawing a day project, it's a really great idea. So I would think about um, what you feel is really achievable and doable. Um, and also think about what's really important to you, what, what do you enjoy doing, um, uh, what, do you re what are you drawn to in terms of um, the subject or the content of your drawings. Um, think about a time of day that you can actually give to yourself um, and also think about how important is it that you, that you do commit to a period of time um, every day to draw. What would you miss if you didn't do it, for instance? So, um, so f for instance, for me, when I've kind of really struggled to, um, to set myself a project, um, for me, getting up early um, and doing a drawing, uh, maybe half past seven in the morning is a good time for me. So, for instance, um, when I was a student, when I was an undergraduate, my daughter was two when I started, uh, went back to study. Um, so I would get up half an hour before I would um, expect her to wake up and I would um, make myself a coffee. Um, and I would also, the night before, I would lay out my drawing materials on the kitchen table because that was where I made my, my artwork. I didn't have a studio at the time. Um, I had very little money and very little resources, um, but I knew that making work was really important to me. It was very special, it was a very kind of special time to give, give back to myself, um, being a mother and also uh, working full time. So I would lay out my materials um, and I kind of, I sort of have a phrase for that. It's, it sounds maybe a bit kind of arty, but uh, setting up the conditions to make work. And it was kind of like that phrase for me is um, it's kind of committing to my practice when it might be difficult. So I would lay out my materials. So then I would make a coffee, I would come down and it was all ready. So I was kind of committing to this time. Um, so I would have maybe half an hour, depending on how long she slept. Um, and then I would put the materials away and then the next, uh, the evening after I'd put my daughter to bed, then I would lay out the materials ready for the next morning. Uh, I would also kind of set an alarm as well. Um, and for me, making work, it's not so much about, um, I don't believe in waiting for inspiration or the muse or those kind of romantic notions of being an artist. For me, it's much more related to having a kind of work ethic um, and kind of committing to making work on a regular basis. I think it's really important to allocate time um, and allocate a particular kind of space that's making a space um, to make the work, whether it's on a kitchen table, on a dining table, uh, in an office, um, wherever that space is that helps you to get into what I would call the kind of the working making zone. In addition to maybe having a drawing practice um, every day, um, for me 
when I found have have difficulties making work, um, sometimes I have um, looked for a project that maybe somebody else has set up. Uh, a few years ago, there was um, a call out uh, in a magazine called Cabinet, and um, it was in response to. Um, it was called uh, an invitation to Solowit, and um, and it just kind of in, really inspired me and kind of resonated and made a connection. Um, and the deadline was actually two days away, so I had a kind of really short period of time in order to respond to this particular project. Um, in fact, I was. Um, I was running an open day on a Saturday at the college I was working at, and it meant that I had to kind of run down to the post office in my lunch break to post this off to New York. Um, but sometimes I kind of think, if you set yourself a really tight schedule or deadline, um, it's amazing what you can come up with. So that's another thing that, that I would suggest if you're kind of struggling with work. Uh, Another thing is maybe to work with somebody else. Um, so, for instance, at the moment I'm um, working with a kind of, it's called an international collaborative drawing project that somebody else has set up. So there are three of us. Um, there's an artist in Romania, um, there's a German artist who's living in the UK and myself. And we've been set a project where we have to make four unfinished drawings and then post them off to one of the other artists. They work on it um, and then they post it on to the third artist. So basically we're kind of working on each other's drawings. Um, so it's quite an interesting project in terms of um, thinking about at what point do we stop a drawing? When is a drawing finished? When is it in progress? Um, at what point can I let it go for somebody else to respond to it? It's quite interesting in terms of um, letting go of your own work and taking some risks in terms of allowing somebody else to work on and over your own drawing. Um, and then kind of thinking about how do I respond to somebody else's drawing? Um, there's a kind of... Um, responsibility in a sense of being really kind of quite sensitive to um, taking time with somebody else's work trying to understand it how can I then um, relate to mirror um, impact on change it's quite an interesting project and it's something that I've never really experienced before so for me it was, um, it's a project where um, I'm, setting out, I'm stepping outside of my own comfort zone um, and it's a way of connecting to and relating to uh, other artists that I've never, I've not met before. I don't really know very much about their project or their practice. Um, yeah, so I would suggest that maybe not a collaborative drawing project, but you know, get together with one or two other students and set up a, a little project together where you can kind of bounce ideas off, um, respond to each other's work, whether it's kind of physically by changing it or making collages out of somebody else's work, um, draw on top of it. Anything that really kind of stimulates you, might take you out of your comfort zone, um, might help you to do something kind of slightly different.